the GTs, was held in March of 1968 at North Carolina Motor Speedway in Rockingham. Well, today, there's a field of over 40 cars in this group. However, there were only a handful at Rockingham. But even at that time, these little cars had all the earmarks of a successful new division in auto racing. Over 20,000 race fans were here to witness North Carolina Motor Speedway's first GT race, and the Cougars were the cars to beat. They were occupying the first three positions with Tiny Lund on the pole, Swede Savage second, and Bud Moore in the third position. Oh, and by the way, starting at the rear of the field, the gal from Winchester, England, Jackie Smith in a Camaro. She won't be in it long, but she's going to start the race. Now the pace car pulls off into pit row, and those little pony cars snarl out of the fourth turn and down the front chute for the green flag. They're off. Tiny Lund jams that cougar hard and leaps off the pole to take the lead away. Sweet Savage in number 15 and Bud Moore in the yellow cougar number one battle it out for the second place spot. As they round out of the fourth turn, Bud Moore manages to slip on the inside of Savage and takes the second spot. Smokey Campbell in that number 75 Camaro is running fourth and Peter Gregg is fifth in the Porsche number 59. A few laps later, Moore, Savage and Tiny Lund are starting to lap some of the slower cars. Those Cougars are handling beautifully inside or outside. They can pick their groove. Meanwhile, the bundle from Britain, Jackie Smith, was waved off the track on the fourth lap. She came in the pits. They told her that the speed she was running, it would take her two days to finish the race. Neil Castle jumped in the car and went back onto the track. Frank Sessions spun this Camaro number 21 out in the third turn and went up against the wall. His pit crew is cutting the damaged defender away from the tire. Look at those triplets on the track. Now, Moore and Savage are in front with Tiny Lund in the pocket. Neil Castle pits the Zero Camaro for tires and fuel. Lund in the number 16 Cougar has been running hard and takes this opportunity to pit for rubber on the right side. leaves the track wide open for Moore and Savage, and they've swapped the lead a dozen times. Jim Vandiver brings his number three Camaro into the garage area. He started smoking on the second lap and has been having trouble throughout this entire race. Finally, Swede Savage, who's been holding the lead, is forced to pit for tires and fuel. This is the chance Tiny Lund has been waiting for. He was trying to catch Savage ever since he made this pit stop. And they'll both be in on the same lap now. After they check the engine on Van Diver's Camaro, they refuel it and he goes back onto the raceway. That trio of Porsches is still running well. Peter Gregg at number 59 is in the fifth spot. The other two are one lap out. Two Cougars are going to fight this one out right down to the wire. Lund in number 16 and Savage in number 15 have been pacing the race at a little over 100 miles an hour. Sweet has been leading this one for the last 15 laps, but now Tiny Lund is pressing him hard. On the 249th lap, Lund fires his car under the white flag. One more lap and he can count the money. out of the fourth turn and down the front chute for the checkered flag, the winner of the Sand Hill 250. Savage finishes second in the team car, but Moore makes it a clean sweep for the Cougars by taking third, with Buck Baker's Camaro fourth, and Greg takes the fifth spot. After a total of 15 lead changes, Tiny Lund ends up in victory lane with a trophy, the big slice of the purse, and the queen. He thought this was a great idea. At Rockingham, those Cougars ran wild, and we wondered just how long they'd continue to dominate the GT division, because there were a lot of garages burning the midnight oil and building competition for Tiny Lund. 
We'll have another one for you right after this message. And in August, we covered another GT race. This time, it was held at the mile and a half high bank Atlanta International Raceway. And it was an all new ball game. The field of cars had more than doubled. They also had some familiar names on the driver entry list, like Paul Goldsmith, Donnie Allison, Charlie Glatzbach, and a smoky eunuch Camaro that startled even a few factory engineers. And Goldsmith really gave it a ride. A 98 degree Georgia sun boiled down on Atlanta International Raceway for the start of this first GT race. Smokey Unix 68 Camaro with Goldsmith at the wheel set a blistering one lap qualifying time and is starting on the pole. There was some question as to the legality of the car. Smokey was forced to make some modifications before it passed the NASCAR tech inspections. Donnie Allison is starting alongside in a 68 Mustang. Then it's Tiny Lund in a Cougar, Charlie Glatzbach in a Dart, and Buck Baker driving a Camaro. The entire field holding position well in the parade lap. Now the pace car pulls off the raceway and this field of red hot pony cars rounds up the fourth turn and pounds down the front straight. They've got the green flag. They're off in a beautiful start. And right away the Chevy Ford battle begins with Goldsmith and Allison side by side and the rest of the field jockeys for position. As they grind out onto that long back chute, Tiny Lund moves up in the third spot. As the lead cars enter the high bank third turn, Donnie Allison kicks that Mustang hard and takes the lead on the outside. Goldsmith loves to run like this, wheel to wheel and flat out. These rebels have nerves of steel. On the bank turn, both drivers split around the car and they're setting a fantastic pace. beginning to take its toll on machinery as two cars head for the pits. Out of the second turn, Goldsmith is on the high side with Allison down low. Down the long back chute, Paul kicks Smokey's little hot rod and takes the lead away. down out of the fourth turn, that Camaro is wound up tight as he screams by the grandstand. But that Mustang won't let go. Donnie is breathing right down his pipes. There it goes. Al Arnold blew the belly out of his Mustang, spun in his own oil, and crashes hard into the steel guardrail. Al is all right, but that Mustang will need a veterinarian before he'll ever race again. Yellow out, Allison takes this opportunity to pit for right side rubber. Arnold crashed into the guardrail leading into the pits, and they have to repair it before they can restart the race. This means a long yellow flag, and everybody is diving into pit row. Paul Goldsmith fires that bronze and black Camaro into his stall. Allison leaps out on new tires and a full tank of fuel. There goes Goldsmith. These two carry their battle right down to the pits, and those crews get them out in a hurry. Onto the front chute, it's the Mustang on the outside, the Camaro in the low groove, and going into the first turn, Allison takes his lead back. Smokey Eunuch built that Camaro to race, and it handles beautifully through every turn, and Goldsmith takes Donnie on the bottom. Both team Porsches pit at the same time, and this is their first stop. They handle well, and their tire wear has not been excessive. Lund in the 
Cougar and Charlie Glatzbach in the Dodge Dart number 93 have been staging a battle of their own for third place. One lap before, Tiny Lund went by and gave his crew the hot sign. They're ready for him now as he pulls in. Tiny tells them, the car's not hot, it's me. So this is how they handle a hot driver. I've never seen that one before, but we learn something new at every race. Smith tries Allison on the high side once again, but he can't quite cut it. Tiny Lund is running third. Charlie Glassbach fourth and fifth spot belongs to Buck Baker. Coming out of turn two, Paul Goldsmith puts his foot all the way into the carburetor and closes up on Allison down the back straightaway. With that Camaro wound out all the way, he passes Dottie in the lowest groove. Glatzbach in that Dodge Dart moves to the high side as he and Tiny Lund pass a slower car. Charlie and Tiny have swapped third and fourth place about a dozen times. And here they come to fight it out in the pits once again. Goldsmith and Allison are both in for tires and fuel. Both drivers are running those right front tires ragged. The announcement has just been made that the track temperature has gone up to a sizzling 148 degrees. Donnie Allison gets away first, but Goldsmith is right on top of him, and the crowd goes wild. Paul has been having a lot of tough breaks this season, and the fans would like to see him grab this one. Charlie Glatzbach buzzes his bumblebee dart into the pits. He's warming up today for the big Grand National race to be held here tomorrow. In fact, he had fast time in his Dodge Charger and starts on the pole in the Dixie 500. Now it's Allison, Tiny Lund, and Goldsmith running third. That last pit stop took a little longer than Paul planned on. Later in the third turn, Paul slips underneath Lund, taking second. Now he's going for that lead Mustang. Within two laps, he catches Donnie down the front chute. Both cars are just a blur as they go by the grandstand. Roy Tyner pulls his number five Camaro down pit row and parks it with transmission trouble. He can try again in the big cars tomorrow. Uh-oh, the crowd jumps to their feet as Paul Goldsmith brings that Camaro in for an unscheduled pit stop. With Unix's car in the pits, Tiny Lund hurls that number 16 Cougar into second place. Paul literally drove the rear end out from under that car and the crew push it back behind the wall. It was the popular opinion that Goldsmith had this one all wrapped up. But those are the breaks he's had all year. A few laps later, Donnie Allison streaks under the white flag. One more lap that he can park that Mustang in victory lane. Here he is out of the fourth turn and down the chute for the checkered flag. Tiny Lund follows him across for the second place money. Charlie Glassbach takes third and Buck Baker fourth. The Mustang idles into victory lane one hour, 59 minutes and 57 seconds after the first green flag. At an average speed of a little over 125 miles per hour for the 250 miles. That's a pretty quick Saturday afternoon drive. Hmm?